Welcome to the 5.0 banner review. Now I'm from the future right now, okay? Cause they officially dropped, but the video was filmed before this dropped. So let's get into it. So our two five stars are gonna be Kazawa and Muelani. Muelani is our new five star Hydro character, Catalyst. And then we're gonna have our four star lineup is Bennett, Zinyan, and Kachina. Now, I'm gonna be honest, not too, not too often we see the brand new four star on the first half. I'm gonna be honest with you, so I'm happy to see that. But Zinyan, there's been a lot of talk about like some synergy with Mulani. We'll get into that later. But Bennett is here. Sure. <laughs> Bennett, you know, it's it's a great pickup to get on your account. So, you know, for the opening banner of Natlan, I guess it's not too bad. And remember, there will be a free Kachina in the Archon Quest. So you play a little bit of the Archon Quest, you will unlock a free Kachina. So don't forget that. If you're trying to like, you know, break your neck, you know, you know doing pulls, trying to get a copy of Kachina, you just keep on getting Dinian and Bennett, you will get a free Kachina. So we'll get into her cons later. I can say right now, she's one of those characters where the cons, they're not all that crazy. And some good ones are very early on. So all my long time Genshin players, you know what time it is new character you go for that you know you don't care about your bennett you don't care about your zinyan you have like c45 of them already kachina that's all you care about newer players honestly you do want bennett so if you if you do see bennett pop up just know that's good get as many bennett cons as you can if you plan to wish on this banner obviously if you don't don't bother with it but if you do want to wish for mulani you're gonna want to hope that that guy pops up so i wouldn't care too much about the other two characters you'll want to focus on bennett and don't forget, free five-star selector. So if you're wishing on any banner in 5.0, whether it be Mulani or Kazawa, make sure you don't forget, if you lose any 50-50, you're going to end up with one of these guys. So if you're going to wish, wish first. Then you can pick your, you know, your character for the anniversary. Make sure if you're wishing, you do your wishes first before you pick. You don't want to say, oh, I want, I want Tainari so bad. I never got Tainari before. Then you pick him first and then you go and wish and you lose. Now you got C1. I mean, if you want C1, that's great. You know, depends on your pulling plan. But I'm just saying, keep this in mind. Don't forget you're getting a free character next patch and you're getting a free Kachina as well. So plan accordingly. And also don't forget this weapon banner is changing from 5.0 going forward. You only have to lose once to guarantee what you actually want. There's only one fate point now so don't go into this thinking that it was like before so it's better i mean you know it, it's still gotcha it still sucks but <laughs> it's a better than it was before so you don't got to worry about losing two times and having to hit pity a third time to get what you want it has been changed to one fate point we got surf stuff the new mulani catalyst freedom sworn Ooh, i see a fab sword in there we got a fab great sword dragon's bane on every single banner ever Sack Frag, that can be useful, mostly early game, or refinements, and then Stringless, kind of, kind of the same thing with that. You're not really like, I gotta get a Stringless, like, you're not really reaching out for Stringless at this point, but, you know, early option for Tainari, and that's pretty much about it. I'd say, and then Fab Swords are always good to have copies of, or refinements of, but besides that, we'll get into the new Catalyst later, but Freedom Sworn, Kazuo Signature, there's so many swords in the game now. There's just so many options for Kazuo to the point where it's just like, hey, if you go for Surf's Up and you get yourself a Freedom of Swarm, so be it, right? But I'd say from, you know, from face value, this ain't too bad. It's not a, that bad of a banner, but if it looks bad to you and you do not want to end up with a Freedom Swarm by an accident, you can go ahead and wait on it. We got a new craftable coming up for Mulani, Nightland craftable. So you can definitely use that if you're a Battle Pass owner. The Sacrificial Jade, you can definitely use that as well. So, yeah, don't stress it. Don't have FOMO, fear of missing out. Like, you know, Mulani will most certainly be back. And if you just want a better matchup, if you don't want to deal with a Freedom Swarm by an accident, like I said, wait on it. You'll probably have a better rerun, but at the same time, you might have a worse. So keep that in mind. It could be for the better, it could be for the worse. Keep in mind, we have two donuts to lose to now. There's two donuts in the game, so be careful. So for a quick overview of the characters, let's start with Mulan. So what does she do? What's the point, Mulani? What's her play style like? Real short and sweet, Mulani is a nuke character. She's a nuke character. She's somebody where you set up a bunch of buffs and she's going to do a forward vape. So forward vape is basically when you just vape Hydro, not Pyro. 
right? So she's going to be the one to do that big vape hit. So you're going to have to apply enemies with pyro, and you're going to have to actually, like, you know, bash into them with your shark. And that bash will do, like, a big hydro hit of damage. And essentially, that's pretty much it for the most part of what the character is supposed to play like. Aside from, like, the really cool movement style to her kit. But that's what you're doing. And have you ever seen those old Genshin videos of, like, Mona, Bennett, Sucrose, like, in front of a cryo regis fine? You know, you ever seen those? Like, that's kind of the idea of what Mulani is to me. Like, she's a new character. She's somebody where you set up, you know, you, you do your setup and you kind of, like, like I said, you bash into them and do a big hit, you know, and you just do it over and over and over again as fast as you possibly can to fit into the window of buffs. Now, I don't have early access, so I don't have Mulani, but let's act like Yelan is Mulani for a second, right? So a lot of the early access, like people who've been playing with Mulani, they've been doing teams like this, where essentially they have Zhongli, they have Nahida and Dia, and essentially you just kind of kind of just do like that, you know? You have them burning, so you continue to have the Pyro Aura on them, but what's cool about Mulani, and much like Yelan, so when Pyro is on an enemy, see the Pyro symbol? When I go through him with Yelan, it didn't actually take away any element. Going through someone with Yelan doesn't actually add any application. You can see that, there's no Hydro on them yet. Now there is, because it just hit. That's exactly the same way that Mulani works. Mulani is basically surfing through enemies, marking them up to three, and then when she has all them marked, she'll have like the biggest buff that she can possibly have. And then you'll go back into them and bash into them and do your big hit. That's pretty much it for Mulani. And the only issue is she doesn't really have great pyro applicators in the game right now. The best ones that we got, I'd say would be Dia for off field pyro. We got Shang Ling, but you know, without her main man, Bennett, she won't be doing as much damage on her own. She'll just be applicating. Toma does normal. He wants normal attacks to be done, which won't be happening with Mulani. So you just, we just don't really have like good pyro off field applicators right now. So that's why we're waiting for Himiko to come out. So that's why we're waiting for Mavakia to come out because she can actually be that one to give that pyro off field application. Will that be her kit? Who knows? But at this point, we've seen how Mulani works. I kind of feel like it should be because we're going four years, four years with nothing but Shangling for the most part. I mean, Dia's there, yeah. But but going back to earlier, this is where all the Zinyan talk comes from, where she can be that power applicator for Mulani. Now, is it gonna be the one that you're gonna pick? Like, oh man, I gotta pick Zinyan. You know, she's gonna be the one. No. The Nian's just somebody who applies power off the field, so that's somebody who you can use for the time being, you know? So as long as you have like, I think it's multiple targets next to you, you can pop this and then, you know, swim around with Mulani and you'll get your vape. So that's basically what the, the whole Zinian thing is. But yeah, I mean, like I said, DL will be a free character you can pick if you want to, and it's your discretion. But if you want to, you can pick her, she'll work fine. But I, like I said, can't guarantee it, but I think Mavakia will be that character that will, you know, what the hell? I think she'll be that character to give that off-field power application we've been waiting for for so long. Or she won't, but hopefully she does. Now, I actually forgot to mention, Mulani ascends with crit rate. That means when you hit level 90 or you get above that level 80 threshold, you are at 24.2%. Right off the bat, let's go to a calculator. 24.2 plus the 40% from the artifact set, the blue one, right? You're at 64.2. You got no room for any crit rate substats. You got no room for any of that if you have a crit rate weapon. Let's say you add like the Lost Bright Sacred Winds, 97.2. They're actually setting this character up to be like a forward vape new character. They don't want you to miss your crit, <laughs> okay? They really don't want you to miss your crit. They're setting this up for you. Now, to be fair, a more realistic look would be like 64, and you know, let's say like you have like some bad crit rate rolls, 
maybe like in total he got about like 12 substats overall oh you're already looking pretty good right so like i said you're gonna add a crit rate weapon in there like sacrificial jade or lost Breath, sacred winds or even like a solar pearl or something like that you are cutting it close okay now the only difference here is if you're not using our artifact set but i mean why wouldn't you so you're you're cutting it close so going forward with the weapon options maybe let's look at crit damage over crit rate and to be fair for the time being you're not going to have the new set instantly so while you're farming the new set you can do two piece tenacity two piece heart of the depth so hydro damage bonus and hp you could just do four piece monster say hunter if you have like the health going up and down you can utilize that but and then you can also you could do like Wander's Troop, two-piece, and two-piece HP, or Hydro Damage bonus. Just something to kind of put together while you're farming a new set. But theoretically, no. Objectively, you want Obsidian Codex. You should be farming Obsidian Codex. Be in that domain, because trust me, you'll be in it for the next, like, four or five months. As for her weapon choices, obviously, her signature one's going to be the best one. Surf's Up basically just gives you more normal attack damage by 12%, but it's going to keep on stacking up for every Vaporize that you do. And you have max HP increased by 20%. And then, of course, 88 crit damage, which is very handy because the artifacts that she's going to use gives her, like, 40 crit rate. So it's really going to help you out there. I honestly would say Taylor Tula's Remembrance, which is Scarabooch's signature weapon. If you have one of those uh, one of those flying around. If you have one of those lying around. Um, this one's actually not terrible either because it essentially kind of does the same thing. You don't really care about the normal attack speed. But once you do your elemental skill, which you will do, you'll get that 4.8 increase for normal attack damage, which he does like. So, yeah, I mean, that if you have one of these laying around, that's also a pretty good option as well. And it's great damage. You don't care about the attack, but it is there. One of the fun ones, in my opinion, the more fun ones is actually Lost Prayers, because this actually increases your movement speed, which is already going to be enhanced by Milani's like base kit. And you get it from this as well. So, and then just elemental damage bonus every four seconds. However, it's not going to be great with the crit rate. <laughs> I'd really recommend a crit damage weapon if you can for Mulani or an HP main stat or sub stat rather, because this is going to be kind of rough. You already got 40 for free and then another 33. Yeah. Kagura's Verity. Honestly, you'll be doing your skill a good amount of times, like, and maybe even three times in fact, but this is definitely not like a go-to option. But if you have one lying around, you can definitely just throw it on her for now, for the time being. You know, high crit damage and more elemental damage bonus if you do some skills. So she'll be doing all these things and she'll actually be fulfilling the passive for once. It may not be instant like Yaimiko, but it'll be a very slow ramp up. Tome of Eternal Flow. Now this is actually Nouvellet's signature weapon. And your HP has to increase, decrease kind of thing. So that may or may not happen with Mulani. I don't really like this too too much for Mulani, to be honest with you. You know how signatures are. They don't really cater to everybody all the time. It's like, you know, hence the word signature. They're pretty much for the character. I don't like this one myself, to be honest, for Mulani. But, yeah, you know, it's something you could use for the at least the crit damage, you know, ratio if you want. I talked about the donuts earlier in a manner of like, you know, you hope you never get one of these. If you, for whatever reason, were pulling on Farina's weapon banner and you actually got one of these, I mean, it's an option. It's not necessarily a great one, but it is an option. She does want HP, and you will actually get energy back, and you'll get a very small amount of elemental damage bonus. It's there, but definitely not something to be like, not, not something to pull for instinctively for Bolani, obviously, so... Then we have the craftable, the Natland craftable. This is a ring of Yatch. I'm not sure how you say that, but basically for every, you know, a thousand max HP, your normal attack damage will be increased by 0 0.6. So that'll stack up and you can gain a total of 16%. So, you know, that's a great, just a good one that has an HP substat and a good pass that will actually work with Mulani. So this are craftable. Look out for that one if you have like catalyst billets to use. So. That's a good one. You guessed it, the Witsith. The Witsith is an only reliable. I've kind of grown to not like it because it has a 30 second cooldown on it. But overall, 
pretty clean, like old reliable kind of weapon. You know, you have three different options of what you could get. It just it's RNG, it's random. Every 30 seconds, you have your attack increased, your elemental damage increased, or your elemental mastery increased. Obviously, for Mulani, she does not care for the first one, does not care for attack. But the other two you could use, you know, once again, just putting out options to see like whatever you have in your weapon box that you can use for her. So I don't let the 30 second cooldown exactly, but hey, you know, the stats are there besides the first one. There's usually like that one or two that the character just, just doesn't want. But for Mulani, at least she has a two out of three ratio for this one. So what's it? Now, if you, for whatever reason, you have no catalyst billet, you have no way of building the actual Natland craftable, the Ring of Yach. You have no way of actually getting it or you just don't want to build it. Prototype Amber. If you got a Prototype Amber lying around, the substat is what you want, but the passive is just kind of whatever. I mean, it's energy, you know, but it's just kind of like, yeah, it's an option. You know, I've seen a lot of Nouvellettes running this as well, like just like F2P to the max. But like I said, you can craft a new craftable. It'll be a much better option than this, but if for whatever reason you can't or you don't want to, prototype amber. Once again, not a good passive here, but the substat crit damage, I mean, you know, if you got one lying around, that can work. But like I said, you're not really working with this passive at all. The passive is not existent for Mulani. For all my battle pass havers, we got Sacrificial Jade. This is a great one. It's not too great for Mulani with the 36 crit rate, like we talked about before. Crit rate's gonna be very easy and accessible with her because the artifact set. So passive works and the substat can work in your favor, but just make sure you're not getting a little too much crit rate. So that's all. But like I said, I'd, I'd recommend crit damage if anything, you know, if you can do it or HP main stat, but hey, it is an option. And last but not least, don't like this one at all, but Solar Pearl. Also crit rate as well, so just not the greatest, but it is normal attack increase. But I just, I don't like this passive. I just don't like the passive. My, myself, like personally, I don't like the passive. It's a, it's a lot for six seconds, you know? So I don't like it, but if that's what you got, that's what you got. So that's your lineup for that. She's got some options, but I'd say unfortunately a good amount of them are five stars and there are only a handful of four stars, but just don't forget Natland Craft. The talent priority for Mulani is gonna be skill and burst. She is like Ayato and Child, where you don't actually care about the normal attacks. Her skill counts as normal attack damage, but it's not her normal attacks that do the damage. So just level the skill and the burst. That's all that really matters for her. Don't care about the normal attack. Constellations, her C1 is a two in one combo. So the first part is a big damage bump. The second part is you consume 30% less of your Night Soul points and Philistine points. Philgestin is like the exploration kind of thing. And then the Night Soul points is like, you know, essentially it's like kind of like your kit. You know what I mean? So like that bar on the side when she's surfing, you'll consume 30% less of those points. So it'll allow you to do a lot more when it comes to combat, but also in exploration as well. Speaking of that, C2, you actually start with those two stacks, those two symbols next to, next to Mulani when she's surfing. You'll already have two. So you'll be ready to go just to get that one last stack left. And essentially what C2 is gonna do for you is it's gonna make it so your damage gets dished out a lot faster and you can actually fit your rotations within the buff times. So you don't have to take as long to set up as you usually would at C0. With C2, you can actually probably like fit your damage within a VV setup, you know what I mean? So VV is just, you know, the Viridescent Mana Reset. So you have like 10 seconds of that. It's gonna be cool, it's a good one. It, it's more catered to making the character a lot more comfortable, as cons typically do. C3 gets increased by three levels, that's your skill. C4 is gonna give you more energy, and additionally, your burst will have 75% increased damage, wow. Boom Sharkalaka, that is great. That's a great name. C5 is uh, burst level by three as well. And then C6, we gotta go back to C1 to explain it. Remember C1? C1 is going to basically, like, you have that buff, right? Where you have your missiles increased by 66% of Mulan's max HP. You can only get that increased damage one time within her Night Soul Blessing. C6 is saying, hey, you don't have to be limited to doing that one time anymore. Like, you know, you don't have to be limited to doing it 
per night soul blessing. There's no limit now. Now you can just go, you can have that big 66 of Mulani's max HP buff hit constantly. You know, it's not just one time anymore. So essentially you'll be just knocking out a lot of damage there. And essentially what that means is that C1 is actually really freaking good. So if you're thinking about pulling for Khan, C1's a good stopping point. And then C2, it's a good one too. It's a good one too. It, it, like I said, C2 is cool because it kind of changes how you're going to play her in, term, in her teams. Like you'll play her the same, but you'll have a lot more time for buffs and whatnot. You'll fit her damage into buffs more often. But yeah, pretty good constellations, honestly. A lot of two and ones. C4, two and one. C1, two and one. You could say C2, also kind of a two and one. So pretty good. So honestly, pretty fun character. Pretty cool character. Forward of Ape, kind of nuke style. Is she worth your primos? No. But <laughs> what you can do is you can wait for the rerun. I think this is definitely a rerun angle. You know, she'll be good, she'll be great, especially with more Natline characters coming out, especially the Archon, obviously. But I just think it's a rerun angle. I just think wait on it, wait for, you know, Hiyo to cook with the characters and see what you're, what you're gonna be getting. And then now you just know going forward, if you pick up the other characters, once she comes back, cause she will, she's the first character, then you'll pick her up and be like, nice. You know, it'll be a breath of, a breath of fresh air. So I think it's a rerun angle. I think you skip her right now. I think you just wait on it and uh, enjoy the rest of the cast, you know? And we just actually got the drip marketing for G Lonin. So we don't know Jack about G Lonin yet, to be honest with you. But I mean, just based off the look and how the character looks, I mean, hey, you know, that might be somebody you want to say for, you know, maybe you've, you've changed your mind now, but just saying as a DPS character, if you need one, her playstyle is a little rough, I'll be honest, especially for like a newer player or a casual player, you know, she'll be strong, but eh, I think it's a rerun angle, you know, and like I said, DPSs, you can just, they come and go, they come and go, they come and go, so I'd say wait for the rerun, that does it for Mulani. Moving on to Kazuha, moving on to Kazuha, it's been four years and this guy is still kicking, he's always been fantastic, he is fantastic, and he will continue to be fantastic. He just, you can't go wrong with this guy. He literally just groups enemies together and gives you an elemental damage buff it's the, if it's the right elements. I don't care what banner he's on or what time his banner is out. I'd always, always, always recommend going for Kazuha, no matter what, if you don't have him. C0 is a great point to stop. I've always had him at C0. He's just great, man. There's not much else to say about him. Even with people like Farina coming out and she gives much more of a damage bonus, at the end of the day, it still doesn't mean this guy gets outshined. You know what I mean? If anything, what happens is you end up putting this guy with the other buffer too. So just, he's a character who is just like immovable, you know? He's just always gonna be, he's always gonna be there. He's always gonna be good. You know, I really don't care what they do. He's always going to be a great character. There are rumors going around that G Lonin apparently will be like the next Kazuha, but even if that is so, even if somebody does power creep him, he's still going to be a great character, you know? And he'll, he'll always be an alternative as well. And like I always say, just because somebody else may be better than the last one, in a game like Genshin, there's always two sides. So one character on one side, one on the other. So either way, he's always going to be a great character and you can always always bet on that that was build is actually pretty simple as well he's like an all em character if you're playing him as a supporter dps might be a different story but very decent mentor set you're looking for er and of course em on these two and of course er on all three of these pieces as well so circlet em goblet em in your sands em and then of course like i said em substats on your feather and your flower um and i will say you know for newer players and newer accounts, this is actually extremely difficult. Like it's an easy build in the grand scheme of things, but this is actually extremely like RNG to get EM pieces. You know, I got, I played my uh, my alt account recently and holy crap, man, it, it <laughs> if you don't get lucky, it can be really hard to get an EM main stat. So you will get it. And this isn't a strong box, so that'll help. But I'm just saying, look out for that newer players. like. It may be kind of hard to get an EM main stat, especially on the right set as well. So look out for that. Um, you know, don't be afraid to use an off piece if you have to. It is what it is there. So it can be kind of hard there. But 
C0 is a great stopping point for him. You know, C2 is a good stopping point if you're going for cons. His weapons, there are so many swords in this game at this point. But, you know, long-term players, you guys have options. Newer players, you even have the Iron Sting to craft as well. The Iron Sting, you can always craft that. It's free. So, a lot of options. Be people run fab on him. For really fun comps, you run Sacrificial Sword. You know, he has a lot of options. You know, I mean... This one looks so sick, but it doesn't really do much for him. But yes, there's many options for him. You know, DPS or support. And Freedom Sworn will be on the banner. So if you end up with a Freedom Sworn and you do have Kazuo or you plan to get him, there you go. So this is just 20% attack and 16% damage for plunging, charge, and normal attacks. So, which, uh, normal attacks? Moonlight. And I do want to mention Xyphos Moonlight. It's a great pickup for him as well. It's a great pickup for Shinobu if you have her. But, you know, it is kind of hard to, like, snipe these weapons out the weapon banner. So, I do have a recommendation on a video in the description below. So, check that out. I think it's a good video to watch, especially if you're just getting into the game. But, it can be kind of hard to get these weapons. So, I'd say just go with your the, the easy route, craft an iron sting for early game. And late game, you will definitely have EM weapons to use. But, his talent priority is going to be his skill and burst. But the thing is, EM scaling is what makes Kazuo Kazuo. It makes him do what he does. It's this passive right here that's like his whole thing. So theoretically, you could have these all at level one if you wanted to. You know what I mean? I'd recommend you level the level these a little bit, especially the burst. Um, and this is like his plunging attack, so that's why I have it leveled here. But yeah, I mean Kazuo, you can just have you know all EM and work off of that you don't really actually need the talents to make him do what he does best but yeah that's Kazuo pretty pretty plain and simple just fantastic character like I said over and over again and yeah looking for EM and, and ER EM ER that's it easy build great character timeless lastly his cons C1 actually will decrease his skill cooldown by 10% and using the Kazuo burst actually it's one of the most generic names in this game it will actually reset the cooldown entirely. So once you pop his burst, if your skill's on cooldown, whatever it's at, it'll be reset. So you can actually do it again. C2 will give Kazuo himself 200 EM once his burst is active, but it will also give the entire party, whoever's in the field, um, 200 EM as well. So that makes for some big vapes. C3, skill increase. C4, a lot more energy. Uh, pressing and holding gives you three or four particles, or three or four energy. So, just one of those energy cons. Really funny one, when he's gliding, he'll get two energy per second. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you can fit that in your rotation, I guess. But that's a funny one. C5 is a burst increased by three. And C6 gives you animo and fusion after you do your skill or your burst. So, that can be pretty cool. But, yeah, there's Kazuma. Very cool character. And, like I said, timeless. Bennett. I hate him. No, I don't hate him. But I just, I'm tired of Bennett being the only person to do what he does for four years. Like, can we have somebody else fulfill his role, please? It's like they made a mistake when they made him in the beginning, you know what I mean? Like, can we please have someone else besides Bennett? You know, I mean, the only other pyro healer we have in the game is Shevers, you know what I mean? So it's just like, ah, like give us something else that we can use. But Bennett is also a great character. All you really care about for the most part is this burst, burst, burst it goes into base attack so like you want to actually have high base attack because that's what it's based off of so you know high base attack weapons are going to favor him a lot the subset doesn't really matter here too much but definitely want base attack but she most definitely want energy energy recharge i mean my good god you need energy recharge if all you're doing is doing his burst you want to have the energy to do it right so build up with energy recharge and he's just gonna be there for attack scalers. Uh, not much for HP scalers. So for example, Nuvalet, Yalon, you know, Farina, they won't really have much of a benefit with Bennett. Um, you can play him within Farina team, that's fine, but he's mainly used for attack scalers. So, and when it comes to his weapon options, like I said, high base attack is good. If you don't really have that lying around, then I would go with just energy weapons like Fav, you know? You'll lose out a little bit on your damage without high base attack, but if you need the energy, you need the energy, you know? I mean, you, you gotta have the energy, but yeah, 
energy recharge substats will be good for him. And maybe you can kind of go with other options like EM if you have a lot of energy. I know Sapwood Blade, which is a really good one, a craftable on Sumeru. That's also one that people have been using as of late. It's a pretty good one as well. And one more for Bennett, the Alley Flash. If you have the Alley Flash lying around, this is actually a four star weapon. It's a very interesting uh, combination. It's 55 EM and a pretty high 620 base attack for a four star. So yeah, if you have it lying around, it's a good option too. So yeah, Bennett's just kind of been the same build the whole time. High base attack, energy recharge, you know, no bless has been his set to use for the most part, but you can also do instructors. Now I wanted to actually talk about this before when I was talking about Mulani. You're, it's going to be really nice to use instructors with her. You know what I mean? And if you don't have these lying around, once you do your bosses, they should pop up. Some bosses give instructors, some bosses give exile. But if you see any of these from your Spiral Abyss or your boss mats, definitely keep them. Keep them. Just keep them. Keep them and level them up. It's also a part of your like uh, adventure handbook. So you'll get some challenges there. But I just recommend keeping these around because Bennett can use this as well to just like boost the vapes of other characters like your on filler like Arlequino or stuff like that. So Instructors and Noblesse, pretty good set for him. I'd only go with those two to be honest. Um, oh, I see Emblem is what some people. <laughs> no, I'd go with Noblesse or if you really want to have like some big vapes with a character, you can do uh, uh, Instructors on him. So those are the two sets for him. The actual set itself, you're looking for an energy recharge, just ER, 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 all ER. Um, he will heal you, obviously, as well with his burst. His burst heals you and gives you the buff. That's why it's kind of like, it's kind of nuts. So, energy recharge sands. And yeah, just really just energy for the most part. You're not really looking for much of a like specific build for him. Just make sure the set is right. For his cons, his C1 is great. It's a great one to pick up. Basically, there's no more like attack increase restriction. So we'll actually just have that 20% increase and you don't have to worry about there being like a cutoff for the attack increase. For his C2, when his HP is below 70%, he gets energy recharge increased by 30%. C3 is going to be his skill increase. C4 is his normal tax. This one is a very strange one. Essentially, you really don't care about this. It's just like... He'll do another attack after you hold it down. And you're pretty much never going to hold it down. Holding down his skill. C5 is a burst increase. Very good. Very good. That's all you care about. C6. C6 is a very controversial con. Because what it does is it basically takes any character who is within the Bennett field. So that gives you the buff. It'll make them do infused pyro attacks. So that goes for people like Ayaka, Kaching, Yula people who you would not want to have their attacks overtaken. So they've kind of caught on to that going forward, where now characters, they it always says their elemental infusion cannot be overwritten. So like I'll hate them and, you know, it's people like that. So it's still, you know, a controversial one. I think it'll always be one that people kind of get a little iffy about or, you know, they get a little shaky about. But personally, I did it. I think it helps more than it hurts. And personally, I just don't really play the characters that would be hindered by this too often. I haven't played Ayaka in forever. I don't really ever play Kaching, and I don't really play Yula. So for me personally, I didn't I didn't really mind it. But um, you know, for you, if those are your favorite characters, that might be a hindrance for you. But yeah, I did it really early on, and I just I just kind of pressed it. Didn't really didn't really think about it. Uh, and once again, yeah, Constellations, Burst, 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 that's all you want. And might as well level this too. I mean, you know, it'll, it'll give you some damage and you have to do it constantly. You're going to be using it to get his energy up all the time, so might as well, you know. But yeah, that is Bennett. Very simple build. Energy recharge, high base attack weapon. Just Burst. Just Burst. Now I'm going to apologize. I don't really have much to say about Zinian. I don't really have too much experience with playing the character. And it hurts my soul to say that because she was one of the standout characters for me when I saw all the demos for the first time. But essentially she is a shield oriented character. They feel like they just kind of put so many eggs in, in, in her basket. You know what I mean? Like she's split scaling with attack and defense. 
She has some like attack oriented constellations, but at the same time, she's a shield character. So yeah, hitting one enemy with her little spin, her elemental skill, it will give her the shield. Hitting two enemies with the spin will give her like a stronger shield. Hitting three enemies with the spin will give her a level three shield, but it will also emit pyro application, the so pyro damage outside the shield. That's where the synergy with Mulani comes from that people are talking about. You can get that level three shield. It'll emit pyro like, you know, just around her. And that can give you the pyro application to vape with Mulani's hit. So that's the main thing that I've, that I've always gotten. It's just like the shield aspect. Then there's like the damage and the burst. It's just like pyro, pyro DOT. There is DOT in Genshin. But yeah, essentially just like a big, like a really cool, really cool design alt. Like it looks really pretty. You know, I always like that, but can't really say much in terms of like recommendations and what you should do with this, that, and third. You know, you can join our Discord. You know, I know there's people who, who do enjoy Zinnia in there and, you know, they can tell you more than I can. But I just can't, yeah, I can't really tell you too much about the character. Always liked Zinnia, but I could never really find a spot for her in teams, you know? So I'm sorry. I don't really have too much to say about about Zinian. Um, her cons, they go a lot towards her shield and they go a lot towards like crit rate increase as well. But yeah, that's like the one thing I can say. Zinian can probably be like a power applicator for Moolani, but I can't really give you much, much on this, you know? So I just gotta leave it at that. And last, but certainly not least, we have our small little Kachina. Kachina is gonna be a four star defense scaling more so off-field DPS character. You could try and make an on-fielder, but uh, her numbers, her multipliers are not too high for that, but you can definitely get the job done. She's mostly oriented to do damage. She's not really much of like a super supporter or a healer or anything like that. She's just more for damage. So a couple things about Kajina. Her synergy with Chiori, right? Her turbo twirly actually counts as a geo construct. So Chiori likes Geo Constructs. Of course, at C0 with Chiori, if you have a Geo Construct on the field, she'll actually spawn her second doll. So you'll have two dolls on the field attacking off field, and then you'll have, uh, you know, Turbo Whirly, which is Kachina's little, mo little monster, <laughs> little machine attacking at the same time. So I don't know what they're trying to accomplish with all this like Geo off field attacks, like Sing Cho and Yelan, but for Geo, but that's pretty cool. And it also helps with Chiori as well because Chiori is also defense scaling. So Chiori actually has some stuff in her kit. I think more so in her constellations that actually benefit other characters by upping their defense. Yeah, most of the supportive things are all in her constellations because her passive is basically just more geo damage bonus for 20% for 12 seconds as long as you trigger the Night Soul Burst, which to do Night Soul Burst, you just need to have a Nightline character in your team and somebody else has to do elemental damage that goes with that element. So for Geo, that kind of works with almost all of them besides like, what, Dendro and Animo. And the other one is just that Turbo Twirly's damage is increased by 20% of Kachina's defense. And the rest are all exploration kind of passives. Now here's where things pick up, right? So C1 is gonna be more energy for Kachina. Um, basically when Turbo Twirly creates Crystallize, if anybody picks up one of those shards, it'll give her three energy. So that's nice. C2 is when she pops her burst, she'll actually regain 20 Night Soul points and she'll just kind of make another Turbo Whirly, Turbo Twirly if there's one that's not on the field already. And she'll enter the Night Blessing mode. C3, skill increased by three. C4, C4, that's a big one. C4 is gonna be very helpful for Ido or very helpful for Chiori, but only if you're in an AOE situation. I mean, to be fair, no matter if there's one, two, three, or four people there, you're always going to have some kind of defense increase for the on-field character. That's what it does. So basically, when you pop the burst, the active character that's in the field will gain an increased amount of defense based on how many enemies there are in the field. So if there's one guy, it's 8% defense increase, two guys, 12, three guys, 16, four guys, 20. So it'll really be good for Ida, you know, because Chiori is not necessarily on the field much. And Navia doesn't scale off a of defense. So yeah, really just Ito, or unless you're playing like an on-field Chiori or something. But yeah, I mean, it's nice for, you know, like Ito for the most part. Uh, C5 is burst increased by three. And then C6 is funny. C6 is 
If you have a shield on and it gets replaced or destroyed for any reason, Kashina will actually deal 200% of her defense as Geo damage. Now, I think this would be a really cool con if they got rid of the cooldown. It says it can happen every five seconds. If there was no cooldown, this would be really cool. Think about it, you know, like, I mean, Zhang Li shield. I mean, it could be any shield, Layla shield, whatever shield, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what shield it is. She will do damage based off of when it gets broken or replaced. So imagine like, I mean, you probably wouldn't play these guys on the same team, but imagine playing someone like Baijin where your shield restores itself every like, what is it? Two and a half seconds. So just imagine like, you know, or imagine just using crystallize, right? Like crystallize your shield, you gain one, you lose one, you gain one, you lose one, you, you, you regain one. It'd be really, a really cool con if she had no cooldown. But I feel like the five seconds is kind of, kind of ruins it. But still a really funny con, a really cool one. But I would say C2 and C4 are definitely like some good, some good points to get to for Kachina. But overall, I would just... For me personally, I would level 70 Kashina and just use it for exploration and stuff like that. I don't play too many Geo comps, especially not the ones that scale off of defense. I like Chiori, but eh. Yeah, just a four star DPS character. If we get into some weapons, most likely it'll be, you know, crit, crit damage, crit rate, or energy if you want to pop her burst and like get that supportive C4 buff for your team. Definitely probably, yeah, go for energy if you're just trying to support your Edo and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So just your classic, you know, damage dealing weapons. Attack scaling is not going to be great here, obviously. Battle pass havers, if you have deathmatch, that's actually not bad. There is a defense increase with this as well. But forget battle pass, forget any kind of pay to win thing. Let's go to the craftable. This is actually our very, very first defense polar. We've never had one before. It's the first one. One took four years. Uh, using elemental skill will increase defense by 16% for 15 seconds. So, tailor made, tailor made for her. You will most certainly use your skill, and I mean, it just works. So it'll definitely work for Kachina. I've seen people try and like throw this on Yunjin. I mean, the defense will be there, sure, but you need energy recharge. <laughs> you need energy recharge. She just needs too much energy, you know? But, Definitely good one for Kachina, and I would definitely craft this for sure. If you want to go, like, just if you're full F2P and you want to, like, wish for Mulani and you get yourself a Kachina as well, craft the, the, the Ring of Yach, the, the, the Catalyst, and craft the Polearm. And, I mean, you're, you're good to go for Kachina and Mulani. As for the artifact set for Kachina, I definitely recommend Cinder City. And you'll be farming this, you know, all the time for the next, like, three or four months anyways, so don't worry about it. You'll be using this for, on her... Um, and actually going back to Mulani, I want to mention, I don't think I mentioned it, Obsidian Codex is going to be what you use for Mulani as well. So, trust me, you'll be in this domain, you know, like it's clockwork, so you'll be in here for the next several, several months. <laughs> but, there an alternative for Kashina, I guess you could say the Hux set, theoretically, but, I mean, yeah, you could, you will do Geo Damage bonus, or you will do, you will do Geo Damage attacks. So that will actually work. And don't forget Golden Troop as well. Golden Troop will also be in the strong box too. So kind of have easy access to it. You do kind of want to burst with Kachina. So look out for that. I wouldn't recommend sticking to this set, but something to use in the meantime while you're farming the new Natland set. So you will be off the field and you will be doing damage with Turbo Twirly. So he'll have like increased damage. And perhaps maybe if for whatever reason you have it, maybe two piece, two piece, like Defender's Will and Husk, like just 60% defense. That's a stretch. But if that's what you got, hey, you know, that can definitely, it'll give you some defense. That's for sure. Yeah, not too much else to say about Katina. Um, she'll be useful in the beginning for sure. But just four star DPS character. Like I said, time priority is going to be skill and burst. You don't care about your normal attacks. C2 and C4 are good points to get to. And yeah, I mean, you know, if one day we have Geo in the Imaginarium Theater, maybe you can just level 70 her just to have an option. But yeah, so that will do it for the 5.0 banner review. I'm sorry this was so long. It's kind of sloppy. It was recorded at different times. I wasn't sure if it was going to be the official banner in the live stream. So apologize for that. It's going on for like 40 minutes or so. But 
They do get a little bit more complicated when new characters come out, especially when there's a new four star and a new five star. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I think I'll be maybe pulling for Mulani. I like to surf around and be fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, that G is looking pretty nice. So I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next one.